Good evening, good evening. It's Thursday. You know what time it is. I am Kristen Nicole Mann, and I am back with another topic. Um, and explaining the art of life. <laughs> So I'm back with uh, another topic tonight, and let me make sure. Let me make this blue a little bit. Okay. So tonight we're talking about six ways negative thinking is harming you. Six ways negative thinking is harming you. I hope you all enjoyed our cooking show, my son and I, last night, and all the other rest of the videos, you can check um, that what I've done or talked about on my YouTube channel um, that's scrolling on the bottom. So let me get my notes up because negative self-talk. This is something that is um, taking over a lot of people. I don't know why the sirens are coming on tonight, but um, if you hear that in the background, I do apologize. So negative self-talk is something that we all do um, from time to time. I honestly don't believe it ever completely goes away, uh, but I wanted to talk about this because it is the end of the year and there are sometimes people that feel like, including myself, that we didn't necessarily accomplish everything that we wanted to, or we didn't um, check off all those goals that we had. And so we can really get in the rut of speaking negativity over our lives. And tonight I'm going to go through six ways um, that are timing your life, our life, everybody's life. Um, or lives. And so negative self-talk, let's talk about it. It is, it comes in many forms and um, I have my notes. So I put it all in order. So that's what I'm reading um, because this has affected me uh, in the past. And then if I like do it um, recent, like I've, I've done it recently and it really doesn't set you up to um, succeed in life. Like it really hinders you, um, your thought process, your creativity. And I just want to share some tips and stuff um, on how to deal with your negative self-talk. If you've been a person that, um, like me, I used to revert to that easily with the quickness. All I wanted to do was speak negative uh, because of what I saw, what my circumstances were, um, you know, if things didn't go right. I was like, you know, negative, negative, negative. But uh, what I really found within the recent years that it didn't really help nothing. It just kind of hindered me and it set me back. And so, um, like I said, I haven't been perfect with it, but it did once I started to change and shift my language and how I spoke to myself, um, a lot changed. Um, a lot of the outlook of life changed. Um, a lot of the relationships changed, all of it. So let me take you through um, the forms of negative talk because sometimes we don't know that there's actually actual different forms of negative talk or just with these topics I've been talking about in general. So get your notebooks out if you wanna write this down um, and I'll put it in the comment section after. So um, there is a grounded form of negative talk. So an example of that is I'm not good at blank. That's a example of grounded. So you always are telling yourself you're not good at something um, you're not qualified at something. How many times have some, I've said this, I'm not qualified. I've actually verbally said it. And what that does, it, um, your brain reacts. Your brain reacts to that. 
So um, the second one, you are mean. So you could be um, an example. You could say, I can never do anything right. That's an example. Um, or I'm never, uh, what's another thing? I'm never like able to um, fall through with my plans or, you know, just negative talk out loud. So that's the mean version. You could be really mean to yourself. Um, hopeless, that's number three. It's, I don't deserve to be happy. So you can sometimes say that to yourself. I don't deserve to be happy. Um, I don't deserve to have joy. I don't deserve this moment. I don't deserve to um, accept what you're trying to give me. All of this is negative and it's hopeless. So that's the hopeless form of negative talk. Um, apathetic is I'll fail anyways. So what's the point of trying? That's another form of negative talk. You can talk yourself right out of um, accomplishing something because you're like, I fail anyway. I failed at life. I failed at this moment in my life. I failed at this. And what we do, we verbally like shut ourselves down to accomplish anything sometimes. So that's the apathetic um, form of negative talk. The last form is defeated. So if you are speaking in defeated language, that would sound like that looks really hard. Um, even if I tried, I'd never be able to do it. So you will look at your lens of certain things that you have to get done. You'll be like, this is too hard. And you'll give up really easy early in the game. And this is why I said it's harming you because in life, we there's things that we have to um, accomplish. And if we're um, doing all five of these, the grounded version of um, negative talk, the mean version, the hopeless version, the apathetic version, the defeated version, we'll never get nothing done. So um, I'm going to put these in the comments. And I will get started with the six negative thinking ways um, that it's harming you. Let me make sure y'all got these notes. Okay. So six negative, six ways negative thinking is harming you. Let's get started. So what it does um, the first thing that it does, it undercuts your motivation. So um, you will completely revert to being a procrastinator. Um, and not even if you don't even get to the procrastination, you just won't do anything. Um, it will just completely wipe out all your motivation to get anything done. And so um, we want to be really careful with, um, I know that this talk at the end of the year, everybody's like, you know, set your new year goals, do this and start in January, start this in January, start that in January, December, what is it today, December 7th, you can start right now. You don't have to wait until January to start um, changing your language. So it really undercuts your motivation. Um revert that and get back to the motivation of, of really just speaking to yourself in a different way. Um, number two, it limits thinking. So um, the more you tell yourself you can't do something, the more you believe it. And I think that's where a lot of us are um, from time to time. We just keep, we tell ourselves over and over like, you can't do something or I'm not this or I want this. And I'm, you know, all that negativity, just I, like I say, your brain hears it out loud and you just shut down. And I've been there before where my thinking has been limited. And especially if you're a person of creativity, you don't want to do fall down the, the rabbit hole of doing this because it really blocks um, you being innovative. And we're in an era where you need to be innovative. And if you are constantly 
limiting your thinking, um, you're going to be left behind. Uh, and I've been there. Trust me. All these things I'm telling you, I've been there. I've done it. And it did me no justice. Um, number three, the way that it's harming you is perfectionism. So how many of you have tried to be a perfectionist at every single thing that you do? Now, that could stem from um, this earlier this week, I talked about childhood trauma. So that could stem from that. And what our environments could do, we could we could take on the negative um, toxic habits that are family designed um, or what we saw when we were growing up. So sometimes it's not our fault that we just started talking negative. Sometimes this is something that we saw. This is something that an adult we cared about um, or looked up to, they lived their life like this. So we take on um, those habits and then we try to be perfect at everything. Sometimes, you know, we're coming from parents that were really hard on us about our schoolwork, about our looks, about, you know, image, especially the people that have parents that cared about image a lot. Um, sometimes this could affect them, the perfectionism of everything. So um, you begin to believe that great isn't good enough. Um, you begin to think that good is not good enough and you want it to be perfect every single thing you want to be perfect so um you really start just setting the bar high on every single thing that you do nothing is going to start out per like we never as humans get to a perfect state of our higher self like I know there's a lot of talk about that, but we never are going to be perfect. That's just not our nature. And so um, when we set that bar really high, we fail time and time and time again. It's like you're trying to outwork this imaginary um, mindset. I don't want to say imaginary mindset, but it is. It's like an imaginary way of living, um, a falsehood. That's what I mean, like a facade of living because you're trying to be perfect at everything. And so um, perfectionism is number three. Number four, feelings of depression, feelings of depression. So some research has shown that negative self-talk can lead to an exasperation, exasperation, exacerbation of feelings <laughs> of depression. So when you talk negative to yourself, you can have um, just a feeling of depression overcome you. And, you know, I remember this one time I was young. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I was young and I had picked up depression and where that came from, it was a really bad breakup. And um, now looking back, I'm like, that wasn't even a relationship, but someone, someone had hurt my feelings, um, a guy that I liked, and I was in deep, deep, deep depression. But one thing I can say looking back is that negative talk to myself played a role in that because what I was doing was comparing myself to who else the person liked. And I would just keep saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. Um, you know, maybe he likes this about the person more than me. That's why he treated me like this. And once that kept going, I just slipped into a deep depression and the words formed and shaped my world. And so this is why this topic is important because we can form and shape our world with um, the words that come out of our mouths. And we never think about that sometimes. We're, we're kind of just going on in life and we're not 
um, retracting anything that we're saying. We're just kind of like, I'm not good at this, or I can't do this, or I, and we're digging ourselves in a, a grave, really, um, to be spiritually dead and just the walking dead. And so that time I was the walking dead because I just didn't speak no life into myself. And all I did was take a shower, go back to sleep, take a shower. And while I was up though, I would think about the things that I wasn't. Um, and it was no good. It was no good. So thank God for me not being in that space. Thank God for God bringing me out of that space first. And I'm just so glad that I learned from that. So um, that was number four. Yep, feelings of depression. So let me put that in the comment section real quick, because I want y'all to have these. Okay. Oops. That said number five. Why did it say number five? Hold on. Let me make sure this is right. Mm -hmm. That was number four. Okay. So number five. Relationship challenges. Um, relationship challenges. And relationship challenges can look like codependency. Um, you're dependent on the person making you happy or sad or having joy or um, it just codependency is a huge thing when um, you self-criticize yourself. And so what you're looking for is that other person to always validate you, always pour into you. And when you seek out relationships to do that, um, you drain other people and other people will not want to be around you because of that. And um, it's, con it's a constant thing. So you hop from person to person, to person, and you want them to um, basically do your job. Like you're supposed to be the one speaking life into yourself first. And then, you know, everyone else is a bonus, but you take on these relationships and you're like, um, whether it's friendship, romantic, and you're kind of just expecting or leaning heavy, heavily on them to do the work for you. So you want them to tell you um, who you are and you forget about you telling you who you are and how you were created and speaking life over yourself. So um, that could create relationship challenges with others, your peers, your coworkers, your um, people you go out with, um, relation like romantic relationships, because you're just so lenient on them to do something that you are supposed to do before you walk out of the house. And so let's not be needy in 2024. Let's not, you know, take this as an excuse to be codependent. Um, so that's number five, and we've all been here. So I'm just going through so that you can help um, other people that may be going through this because it's a real thing. Um, all right, so let's get to ways to cope, the exciting part. Oh, then the last bonus is that obviously this reduces uh, the success that you can have. Negative talk reduces uh, success that you can have um, within your career path, your relationships, your life in general. Um, you're not going to get up every day and accomplish anything if you're constantly speaking negative into your life. And the five ways, like I went over, 
Um, let me refresh y'all. It's grounded, mean, hopeless, apathetic, and defeated. Those are the five ways that we can speak negative talk into our lives. And if we're getting up every day and doing that, we're it's it's it slows our motivation down. It doesn't help us um, really go after what God created us to do within that day. And you just basically waste time talking bad to yourself. See, that's what it does. It isolates you and it makes you think or magnify the bad things about you. And so your mind, your mindset is thinking of these things as huge. So it's like, this is all in the front of your head. Like the, uh, the say the water bottle is a negative thing. So this is in the forefront of, I can't see, see, I can't, I can't. And every time I try to get around, I'm like, I can't see. That's what this represents. So just think about it being in the front of you and you're like trying to see life around it. That's what it looks like. Um, the negativity blocks your clear view. It really does. Um, it blocks everything that God wants you to see. So we got to stop doing that um, like tomorrow or today and not wait till next year. So ways to cope. Okay. Ways to cope with negative self-talk. Our thoughts are not our um are not facts. Our thoughts are not facts. So our opinion of ourselves is not actually factual when it's negative. So we want to be careful of basing our identity or our personality on something negative that we have talked over ourselves. So if I'm always like, I'm not good at doing live video, guess what I'm going to be? Not good because my mind is going to think that that's actually factual. And we want to get away from that. What is factual is that I can articulate myself well. I can show up and talk about certain things that I've experienced and I have well knowledge of. And this is what you want to say to yourself. You want to kind of, um, I can't remember her name, but there's a lady that has a book that has a um, routine in the morning that she does where she talks to herself for like, a certain amount of seconds or minutes right when she gets up. And she says, you're just a beautiful person. You can do it. You Like she does this activity every morning. And so when we don't do that every morning, we actually do the opposite. And we're like, oh, you're like, why is, why is my eyes like drooping? And what is this new pimple that sets the tone for our day? And so we want to be careful with that. Um, your thoughts and feelings about yourself can definitely not be considered accurate information. Okay. So number two, I like this one. Think of, think like a friend to yourself. So whatever you would say to a friend, if they come to you with advice. So if, um, you know, you're asking yourself like, or your a friend comes to you and they're like, I need help. Um, I don't feel like myself. I don't, you know, I just, I really feel like I'm losing myself. Um, I don't feel pretty today. What would you tell that friend? So you have to talk to yourself like you would talk to a friend. Um, you wouldn't tell a friend that she's ugly. You wouldn't tell, I mean, yeah, you would say like, pick up on yourself, but you wouldn't put it in that way. You would say, it. you would be very encouraging. You would say, no, you're still the bomb.com or whatever you say. And you would encourage her. So that's how we got to encourage ourselves like a friend. Um, be a friend to yourself because when you're mean to yourself, you become an enemy. And we all have that internal battle sometimes where we're against, we're our biggest enemy. Um, it's not everyone else. You got to get away from blaming everyone else. It starts with you. 
So if you are mean to yourself, you are an enemy to yourself. And that could be what's blocking your uh, success, your relationships, everything that pertains your life. Um, so if you know you wouldn't say this um, to a friend, don't say it to yourself. That's 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 the best way that I can put that. Uh, so number three. Oh, and this is another way to um, shift your mindset. Once you start talking to yourself as a friend, you're going to realize that you haven't been so nice to yourself. Like y'all ever just take the time to stop and like compliment yourself, like really, truly compliment yourself, because then you're going to realize that you've been missing that love, that self-love that everybody keeps talking about, like that's true, genuine self-love. Um, so give yourself a hug. Like really just say, you know, I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of how far you've gotten in life. I'm proud of how you handled this. You know, like really talk to yourself. Geniuses talk to themselves. Um, Another one, the last way to cope is, oh, let me put this all in the comment section. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to put number one and number two, and then I'll put, well, I'll put number three, too. So, number three. Okay, there's all that I was, my notes. So number three, finally, is shift your perspective. Shift your perspective. Sometimes looking at things in a long term can help you to realize that you may be placing too great an emphasis on something. Um, even thinking of the world as a globe and of yourself as a tiny, tiny person on this globe can remind you that most of your worries aren't as big as they seem. This can often minimize the negativity, fear, and urgency in negative self-talk. So let me break this down even further. We are not the only ones that deal with negative thinking, negative self-talk, we're not the only ones. But when we stay in that place of feeling low, feeling like we're last, feeling like we're, you know, could accomplish more, we self-center ourselves. So we're, we're acting in a selfish manner more than we think. And we aren't the only ones that go through certain things. Um, there's several people going through things right now. So when we um, only think about ourselves and we're, you know, we're not taking into consideration that we're not alone, um, you, we will never get out of that rut. And so take a globe like the one behind me, look at all the states. If I am one person and all of these people live in the, the Western hemisphere, I can't, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. There's other people going through the same economy, the same um, situations in society, and it's all really up to how you deal with it. So if you are just going to stay in a negative space, well, you'll get negative results. You're going to always think not to reach out, not to try to solve any problem, like just I'm going to continue to go down this destructive path and I won't speak life into myself. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. This is the whole point of me being on. We're not doing that. So next time you look at a globe, I want you to look at how big it is. Like, not the globe in literal sense, but look at how big this world is. And if you are only thinking about yourself, you're not going to realize how big of a world it is out here. Okay? So, I pray this helped. 
um, tonight because this is a big one. Um, negative self-talk is really a, a silent killer. It is hindering a lot of us and we need to do better with our mouths. And so the mindset shift is um, shifting your perspective on life. Um, like I said, you realizing you are not alone and you can you can gravitate towards a community that will help you um, talk to someone that's been through stuff before and has overcame. I always say that, like that will help you a lot when you talk to people that has overcame and they're living in within the overcoming. They're not just, you know, up and down. Don't talk to those type of people. Talk to people that have been consistently going away from how they used to think, how they used to act, and they're going towards a successful life. Um, because once you get around like groups of people that talk um, like positive, or even if they're going through something, they have just a joy you're going to want that too. I recognize like the more that I put myself around people that have joy, not happiness. Like I posted this morning, there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is what's happening now. Joy is like, I'm going through it, but I know that I'm going to make it out on the other side. I know that I have good people that I can reach out to. I know that this is temporary. So that's what joy is. And you just keep that and you hold tight to that in your heart. But happiness comes and goes because it's what's happening in that moment. So when you surround yourself with people that um, have joy, they have a different language from what you grew up with, maybe, or what you, you know, people you decided to hang out with that just kind of really dampened your life. You will change. You'll, your perspective will start changing. Your mindset will start changing, especially if you have people that are pouring into you um, with non-negative things. They're kind of like uplifting you with um, seeing who you are and what you're, your, what you bring to this world. Um, they, they know your purpose and they're not jealous of it, but they'll rather like help you with it. That'll change your whole. It'll change the game for you. Um, so find those type of people, be intentional about it. You might have to go to a mixer. You might have to go to a place that usually you would be uncomfortable in, but if you're going to try new things, I would try things that you're not comfortable with because usually when you're not comfortable um, in environments with uh, people that just look like they're uh, you know, people always say doctors and lawyers and um, those type of people, they scare them because they're not really that smart. So you want to be in those environments, like get in front of those people, whether you know what to say or not, you'll be so surprised. They'll probably embrace you more than where you've been. Um, so just be careful of trying to stay in the box because that staying in the box contributes to your negativity because all you're thinking about is like what's in front of you what's <laughs> like nothing's on the side nothing's behind you but this box get out the box and you'll see that it's a whole world out here of people that can help you and that can mold and shape you so I'm going to get off of here. I put the notes um, in the comment section. I will have this on YouTube as well. Um, follow my YouTube channel. It's right there. And I hope to see you soon. Have a good evening and talk to you later.